Hello everyone, uh, this is the continuation of uh, math chapter 10.3, full of coordinates, and this is the last part of um, this chapter 10.3. And I'm going to finish all this today, just now, in this last part, and then next video will be on chapter 10.4. So this is the end of uh, chapter 10.3. Now in this uh, video I'm going to cover the tangents to the polar curves. And you know the polar curves are defined by r equals to f theta that we already discussed, you know. And the um, equations uh, for the polar curve um, are x equals to r for sine theta and y equals to r sine theta. Right? This is the um, these are, you can consider as the parametric equations for the polar curve, you know, from the triangle that we are drawing. This is the relationship between the Cartesian coordinates and the polar, polar coordinates. Now, the slope we have already defined in the beginning, you remember, when we were doing t as the parameter, we had dy by dx equal to dy by dt and dx by dt. Now, instead of t, I have theta over here, theta is the parameter. So you're going to differentiate this guy with respect to theta, and you're going to differentiate this guy with respect to theta, and just divide the two. Now remember that r, this r is a function of theta. You know, it's related by this equation. So <clears throat> there's polar coordinates. So you have to, it's not a constant, you know, like uh, it is a function of theta. So if you do dy by d, d theta, you have dr by d theta, then this function here, then r and differential of sine theta is cosine theta. Similarly, dx by d theta is this one. Uh, you have again dr by d theta, and this is cosine theta. And then you have minus sine theta, differential of that, and then you have r over here. Now we're going to locate the horizontal tangents and the vertical tangents, and for that we have already said that you have to set this guy the top for horizontal tangent, you're going to set the top equal to zero, provided the bottom is not zero, and for the vertical one you have to set the bottom, dx by d theta equal to zero, and make sure that the top is not zero. Zero by zero, you know, doesn't make any sense. So just uh, a little bit to digress from this thing, if you're looking for tangent lines at the pole, at the pole, your r is going to be zero. So dy by dx, over here, r equal to zero, this goes away. And this is, uh, and dr by d theta cancel out. And provided they're not zero, you can divide by dr by d theta, you know. So sine theta divided by cosine theta is your tan theta. And uh, this guy, so dy by dx is the slope m equal to tan theta, and tan theta, you know, is your y by x, right, in four coordinates. So in Cartesian coordinates, you have the equation y equal to x, y equal to mx, that is, this is the equation that passes through the origin. You know that equation, right? So what I'm saying is that, um, anyway, in the four coordinates, you can calculate m, just substitute over here, and this is going to give you the um, the slope, the tangent lines at the pole. So in example eight, you know, you have this equation r equal to cosine two theta, and uh, <clears throat> yes. So this r equal to zero, and theta equal to pi by four and three pi by four, right? Because that's what we are trying to see where, you know, at the pole r should be equal to zero. So r should be equal to zero at these two th thetas. And we know that pi by four, theta, by, so tan, tan pi by four and tan three pi by four is going to give you plus minus one. Right? And then the tangent lines, to this, at the origin, they're going to be simply y equal to plus minus x because m is plus minus 1. Tan theta is your m, 
and tan theta is plus minus one. So these are the tangent lines at the origin, you know. So theta equal to pi by four, and at theta equal to three pi by four, these are two tangent lines you must have seen in the figure. This is just you know, nothing too great, you know. Um, so that's how you determine the tangents at the pole for this thing. First of all, at the pole, you know, you have to know what are the angles that correspond to this uh, r equal to zero. Now there is an example nine uh, for cardio cardioid. The equation was r equal to one plus sine theta, and uh, this is this is what we did in example seven. In example nine, we're going to find the tangent and the slope. You know. <clears throat> So A is find the slope and tangent line at theta equal to pi by three. So they have given us that my theta is this much. And he says, you find the slope at this point and also the equation of the tangent line. I think that's what they say. What does it say? Just let me check. Anyway, something like that. And B, find the points where the tangent line is horizontal and vertical. In this figure, in this cardioid, where we have horizontal tangent lines and where we have vertical uh, uh, tangent lines, you know, that's what he wants to know. So again, you know, to find uh, the vertical and horizontal tangent line, you need the slope. And slope, you know, is over there, right there. And dr by d theta, you just take this thing and differentiate it. Uh, and it's substitute over here. So that's what I did. dr by d theta is your cosine theta. So this will be cosine theta, sine theta. And again, this is your cosine theta and r, r equal to 1 plus sine theta. That's what I wrote over here. dr by d theta is your cosine theta. This is cosine theta. Again, R is uh, this thing over right here. You open this thing up, so this is cosine theta, sine theta, plus, this will be cosine theta, uh, plus cosine theta, sine theta. And this is your cosine squared theta, minus sine theta, <coughs> minus sine squared theta. <coughs> now, cosine squared theta I can write as one minus sine squared theta, right? So here, this will be your two cosine theta, sine theta, plus cosine theta, you take cosine theta out, so I get uh, one plus two sine theta inside, you know. And divided by uh, one, one minus, what was it, this guy. Divided by one minus two sine square theta, minus sine theta, that's what I have. And what I did, I wrote it like this, you know. I wrote minus two sine square theta, and this minus sine theta is minus two sine theta plus sine theta, and then one remains over here, then I factorize this thing, you know. So I factor out minus two sine theta, so that gives me sine theta plus one over here, and I just take factor one out, so sine theta plus one. So in these two terms, this is common, sine theta plus one, I factor that out, so I get 1 plus sine theta, and multiply it by 1 minus 2 sine theta. Because I have to set these things equal to 0. Now he says, what is the slope at pi by 3? So that's my slope, I just put theta equal to pi by 3. And I just uh, simplify this thing, I get equal to minus 1. So you can see, I've drawn this figure right here. The slope is minus 1 at angle pi by 3. And when you know the angle pi by 3, you can determine your r from this thing. And pi, sine pi by 3 is square root 3 by 2, so that's why r is 1 plus square root 3 by 2 pi by 3. So that's where the slope is negative, and that's what he wanted. Uh, he doesn't want the equation, I guess. That's what it is. Now we're going to do horizontal and vertical slope. So for horizontal slope, you know that this dy by d theta this has to be zero. And dy by d theta, I know, is equal to this thing. Where is it? This guy. That's my dy by d theta. 
And that's my dx by d theta according to this equation. So for the horizontal slope, I have to have dy by d theta equal to zero, which is this, I have to set it equal to zero. So either cosine theta equal to zero or this, I have to I take both, both of them. So cosine theta will be zero at pi by two and three pi by two. Remember theta goes from zero to two pi. And then the other one is one plus two sine theta has to be zero. So sine theta should be minus half. And if you look at your trigonometric book or something, theta has to be sine seven pi by six and 11 pi by 6, that's where it gets the value of minus half, you know. So dy by d theta equals 0 when theta is your pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, and 7 pi by 6, and 11 pi by 6. I have, this is when theta equals 2. Uh, when dy by d theta, theta equals 0 at d theta, you know. Similarly, vertical tangent would be when dx by d theta is 0. This guy, the denominator. All right. So dx by d theta is this guy now, the denominator. So you have to set one plus sine theta. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this guy has to be zero. The product has to be zero. Now, if this is zero, that means sine theta must be one minus one, and that means theta should be 3 pi by 2. For this guy, sine theta has to be half to satisfy this equation. And for that, theta must be pi by 6 or pi by, five pi by 6. So th these are the angles at which we found that it has to have a horizontal tangent. And these are the angles. So I wrote these angles over here, 3 pi by 2, pi by 6, all these. But I look at the two. 3 pi by 2 occurs over here and here. Now dy by d theta and dx by d theta cannot be zero at the same time. That we know, right? We cannot have, we cannot have these two zero. If this is zero, this cannot be zero. If this is zero, that cannot be zero. So for that condition, because this occurs in both of them, I'm going to reject this guy, 3 pi by 2. So I'm just left with how many? So OK. So for vertical, I have to have vertical will be at these two. And you can see uh, at pi by 6, at pi by 6, and at 5 pi by 6, these are two vertical uh, tangents over here. And if I put my pi by 6 over here, I can calculate my r. For pi by 6, is going to be half. So that's why it is 3 by 2. So there are two vertical tangents. And for horizontal one, we have 1, 2, 3. Three horizontal ones. One is at pi by 2. One is at 7 pi by 6. And 11 pi by 6. And by symmetry, you can see that the R values are the same. So that's how you do, for polar coordinates, that's how you determine the um, uh, vertical and horizontal tangents. Okay, thank you very much. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I have finished this chapter 10.3, and my next video will be about uh, uh, chapter 10.4. So thank you, and goodbye for now. <laughs>